So before we talk a little bit about kind of the importance of BuildShip can play in our no-code development, let's sort of rewind the clock back slightly and let's look at a typical three-tier architecture. Now, what does that mean? Well, a three-tier architecture would be a front end, a back end, and a database. So here we have the front end, which really should be the most leanest and meanest part of your three-tier stack. We've got the back end, which plays a crucial role in not only maintaining a set of business roles but it plays an important part in talking to our database that our database then returns back results to the uh, kind of the back end that ultimately then returns it back to the front end so let's just put that scenario on the table so the front end will make a request into the back end the back end will make some kind of business decision and then of course it would then talk to our database it will kind of tap into the data or kind of return that data back the back end might do some further kind of uh, analysis of that particular data and of course then return that back to the actual front end itself so in a typical checkout scenario it could be that everything is worked perfectly and of course the checkout is complete and the purchase is actually made now that's one uh, typical kind of setup. Now we shifted slightly somewhat in the in the last quarter couple of years, where kind of like the no code applications are doing just a little bit more than perhaps how we are used to doing maybe in a kind of a typical three tier setup. Because what they are actually doing is making direct requests actually into the database itself. The 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 kind of the no code the front end tools are becoming quite sophisticated and quite intelligent and providing those particular opportunities where we can make into those calls back into the database. And of course, the database then can return that front end uh, sort of result set back uh, for the user to then kind of do whatever they need to do. Now, of course, what we're doing is we're kind of bypassing the kind of the back end. Now, that is OK, so long as whatever you're doing uh, to and fro from the database is quite simple. The problem with that, of course, is that where are the restrictions? Where are the, uh, the rules that need to be there in order to make sure that data is not being returned back to your users that perhaps are not allowed to see them. Well, pretty well much in most kind of modern kind of uh, sort of architectures now, you tend to have some more controls on the actual database side as well. There's restrictions that can be in place. Now, if you've been a Superbase user, you'll know that you can kind of put policies in place that will kind of allow only authenticated users to retrieve data back to the front end. Or it could be that you may be a, a particular user and you only want to get at your own data or at least restrict it to only your data and of course rules can be put in place at the database side or literally just on the outside of the database side to stop kind of unauthorized data being returned back to the front end. So that's kind of the setup that we've got but there is still one key part and that of course is the kind of like the business rules. Now, where are those business rules? Well, the problem is, is you don't want to put those business rules in the front end. And the typical case for that might be is that if you are building a front end application and you've put business logic in the front end, and of course, there's a reason for that logic to change. It means that you would have to then make changes to your front end applications, push those back out to the app stores, wait for them to be approved. And of course, your, your business rules would then be then available then to the user at that particular point. By keeping the front end as lean and mean as it possibly can be and only focusing as a presentation layer, it means your business rules can sit quite comfortably where they belong and that is in the back end. And you can then make those changes to those business rules whenever you would like and then you don't then need to make changes to the actual front end application. So it's important that the back end plays a really, really important role to making those particular decisions. And I will talk a little bit about build chip in just a moment and then we'll also talk about a scenario where hopefully it will paint a picture to why a back end can play such an important role. So that's pretty well much it. Let's just have a quick summary then at this particular stage and let's talk a little bit about kind of the front end, the back end of the database. Just by summary, we know that we want to keep our front end as lean and mean as it possibly can be. We really don't want to be putting too much of the business logic in the front end. Of course, we can make kind of small kind of decisions, but you want to kind of keep it as, a, as very much presentation focused as you possibly can be. The back end is the place where the important business rules need to sit. And so we'll talk more about that as we move through these particular series of videos. And of course, the database is important. It's, it needs to be optimized. Um, it's, it's, it needs to be well-maintained. 
but I, but ideally that is where pretty well much all of your data is going to live and like I said just on the outside of that you'll likely have some kind of uh, sort of, sort of some policies or some controls to kind of restrict data that is going to be then returned back to the actual front end itself so that's it in summary and that is a typical three-tier architecture in its most simplistic form.